Hello everyone, it's Anna, the Viking Stitcher. Um, I'm back with my third floss tube now. Um, if you're new here, I'm from Iceland, but I live in the UK. I've lived here for about 15 years now, um, which, God, I can't believe it's been 15 years. Feels like it was yesterday. Um, but I lived in the States when I was young, so I still have a bit of an, bit of an American twang. Um, but there's still a lot of British in there. And then obviously Icelandic is my main country of origin. Um, I have two children um, with my husband who I met over here, a two and a five year old, so I don't get a lot of time to stitch. Um, mainly just like half an hour to maybe an hour on an evening. Um, I occasionally go to like stitchy groups. Um, I go to the North Hants um, meet up in Basingstoke once a month usually if I can make it. Um, and I also sometimes go to the Kindred Spirits meet up at the Basingstoke Canal here in Mitchett, um, which is really nice because it's literally like five minute walk from my house. It's lovely. Um, so I have a few things for you today. Um, I think I mentioned in my last video that I've set myself a target to finish my daughter's stocking by the start of August because my mum is coming to visit um, and I'm not very good with the sewing machine so I kind of need her help to finish the stocking. Um, so I've already done my son one. It's mostly finished. Oh gosh, it is hailing outside. It's hailing! What is going on? Like we've had like insane weather. Like it's so hot in the UK right now. It's like 30 degrees. And I know probably a lot of people around the world don't find that very hot, but A, like the UK is not built to withstand heat. Like there's no air conditioning anywhere. Or if there is any, it is just a minorest thing ever and, and it doesn't really stand up to the heat. Um, and also like the heat here is really humid and the houses are built to not to like let all the air out. So it's been sweltering hot and now it's just started hailing. What is going on? Oh my gosh. Anyway. Right, I'll show you my son. I'm not gonna show his name because I'd rather not have my children's names out there on the wide internet. But um, this is his that is almost done, but it's really nice. I really like it. Got the Santa and the snowman and the snow cat here. And then there's a little edge here and then you have his name. And then at the top, so I haven't, I need to finish this bit. So the, this needs to like fold down and I need to finish that. That's the only bit I have left for his. Um, but at, I think it was, so I started hers in January or I bought the, the kit cause it's a dimensions kit in January. I don't know if you can, here you can see that there. So you can see what the, the name area should look like. Um, but yeah, I bought the kit in January. I didn't really have a lot of motivation to work on it um, and barely touched it until about May. And it was when I went to the, I decided I went to the Kindred Spirits meetup. Um, I think it was the 13th of May. And I barely touched it at all at that point. I think I was maybe 10% done. Um, so I decided to, that was the only thing I took with me to that meetup. So I decided to work on it for that meetup. And then I sort of realized that um, it would be good to have mom's help. So I worked out how many stitches I would need to do a day. Um, to be able to be finished by the time she got here, which 
at the time was I think 165 stitches a day and I've mostly stuck to that so I am fairly on track to do that. Um, where's hers? Hers is right here and it is here. Oh I forgot to put in, I forgot to put in the, the where I was. I'll, I'll stick it in here but I'll do it before I show this thing. Sorry, I'm all scatterbrained today. So we're doing well. Um, I think I'm 50, 50 or 55% done with this. Um, so you can see, you know, most of Santa is done here. There's a few bits sort of in his coat that need filling in. His beard needs filling in, but that's mostly empty space. Um, there's just a few sort of, I can show maybe on the other one. Most of his beard is not stitched. It's just left empty. There's like, in these swirls, there's some, it's not quite white. It's like a pale, pale, pale blue. Um, but most of it is not stitched. So it looks like a lot of empty, but there's not actually a lot in here. Um, what I do need to stitch is, I haven't done any of the bottom on the snowman, but that again is, there's a lot of empty. So if you look at it here, you can see where they're stitching sort of along there to give the shading. But all of this, like all of this space here is empty. This is all empty. There's nothing there. And same with the snow cap. So I need to do the sort of outlines on those. Um, I need to do the bunny and the bird and then I need to do her name and obviously the top bit there. Um, but yes, that's coming along quite nicely. Um, I am a little bit behind, which I will explain in a little bit as to why that's happened. But um, I've got two stitching, stitchy days planned for July. There's a Basing Stoke and a Mitchett one um, towards the end of July. And then I'm potentially, I'm supposed to have like a summer fun day at work. Um, and they have loads of like sporty stuff there and I'm just not very sporty. Um, so last time, last year I was a bit bored and I just kind of sat on the sidelines and, and you know, chatted with people and stuff like that. But I think I might try and sneak my stitching in and get a bit of stitching on that day. Cause I may as well, rather than be bored and I can still chat to people at the same time. Um, so I think that's what I'll do. Um, so, the reason I am slightly behind, other than just being an exhausted working mom of two, is that, so, I have joined some, um, stitchy games on Facebook, which I really like them, they give me a lot of motivation. So they're like, like there's a Harry Potter one, there's a, well, there's one that's like currently Lord of the Rings, but it's called the fandom um, stitching group or something like that. Um, and they choose a fandom each year. So this year is Lord of the Rings. Um, so I've got that one. I've got a floss in space one. And there's all the floss in the fair or something like that, where you build like a theme park essentially. Um, but you do this by, you get like prompts and stuff and, you know, um, for example, the Lord of the Rings ones, they have weekly prompts, which are like based on what's happening in the books. And so they'll have like such and such happened. Like there was one where, um, I think it's when Gandalf's like lost in warrior or something or other like that. And the prompt was stitch on something dark. So it's things like that. Um, so that's for the weeklies. We also have monthlies, which are kind of similar. Then there's, there's a year long one where you stitch, I think 3000 stitches for each of the rings. So there was like the, it was what? Three for the el three rings for the elves, nine for the race of men, three, no, seven for the dwarves, I think, something, something along those lines, but like, it, loads of stitching to do to get you throughout the year um 
and I only joined recently, so there's no way I'm going to finish all of that, especially when I don't stitch that much. Um, but it's fun to just take part. And they have, um, these groups have also have like pop-up weekend events. I've had like two now. Um, so what was, one was just, I think, work on a work in progress, which was fine. So I just used my stocking. But one was start on a new, new start, which was this weekend. And I was kind of going back and forth about whether I should do it or not. But then I just thought to myself, well, like, I think I can still catch up. Um, and it would be really nice to start something new and just give myself a little break from just stitching the stocking. Because I think otherwise I'm going to lose my mind. So what I did, going back to quite a few years back now, um, when I was on maternity leave with my son, I had this idea that I would um, stitch some like travel themed pictures for the nursery, which he's gonna turn six in November and I have one that's almost done, that's not even fully done. <laughs> and three more that were supposed to be in that. So that didn't quite go to plan. <laughs> um, but I had all the floss for that um, and I think I've shown this one before, but I'll show it again. This one's the one that's almost done. I think this is like 95% done. So this is Pretty Little Tokyo from Satsuma Street. Um, and I think it's mostly some white bits. Or actually, did I finish that? Oh, I did. I did finish that. Oh yeah, that was part, supposed to be part of my update. <laughs> yeah, I finished the, the white in the waves here. So I think there's still some white in here. There's something that goes here in the middle of the door. I can't quite remember. Um, there's a few bits in the tower here. And then there's supposed to be a sun here. Um, which I've only just started. This little bit here is supposed to be the sun, but there'll be a bigger area. And then the white in the clouds here is also needs to be done. But yeah, like, I think it was somewhere around 95% done. So that's almost done. Um, so I decided to start Pretty Little New York, um, and I think I got to, and I've, I've literally just, I've stitched on this two days, so that's there, that's what it's supposed to look like. Um, however, as you may be able to spot, I have a slight issue, because when I started these, I wasn't very experienced, and um, Cut the Ada too short. You can, I mean, you can see like this. I kind of stitched straight down so I could see how close it. And it's literally, I think I have about a centimeter here, a border. Um, Pretty Little Tokyo is slightly better, but it is still very close there. I think it's about a centimeter and a half when I was looking at it. So. Yesterday I was having a bit of a crisis of whether I should even continue with this because it's so close to the border. Um, but I did some research and I saw a post in one of my groups on Facebook, I can't remember which one, that basically someone had, instead of putting like a mat in the picture frame, they like sewed on a fabric to work to like essentially work as a mat. So I think I'm going to try that because then I can just literally stitch it on the edge here. And then and then they like, whatever you call it, when you like crisscross it in the back to, to keep it taut in the picture frame. So I think, I think I'm gonna try that. <clears throat> but yeah, it's kind of, um, kind of not quite what I wanted, but you live and you learn. I've never done that again. Um, so, it is what it is. Um, what else do I want to talk about? How about I talk about some haul? So, first small haul um, is, where are you? So I decided to buy some cute little pattern bags. Floss bag. If I could find it, it would be great if I could find it. 
So I got two little ones, just a little kind of zip block bag almost. Uh, um, so it's kind of Christmas themed. It's very pretty. Um, and I'm keeping the floss from my daughter's Christmas stocking in here. As it's Christmas themed, I thought that would be appropriate. Um, and then I also bought this little travel project bag, which I'm absolutely in love with this fabric. It is so pretty. Um, and I wasn't, I wasn't even sure what I was going to use it for, but I have found a use for it. So this is now my storage for the pretty little city patterns. Um, so it looks like this on the inside. I've got, I mean, I know that like there's lots of other people that would be far more organized. Um, mine is a bit chaotic. Um, but yeah, and then I've got the patterns in here. But it's quite nice. I like having the scissors. I tend to like tuck them in like this. So they're like that. Um, but yeah, that is my very pretty, pretty little pattern um, project bag. And then the big haul that my brother brought. So for those of you who haven't seen the previous episode, um, I have a grandfather who lives in the US. Most of my family still lives in Iceland, but my grandfather is American and my mom usually goes at least once a year to visit him. Um, and she went in May. And I, of course, used the opportunity to buy a load of stuff because it's so much cheaper over there. Like, I think DMC at Hobbycraft, which is like the main hobby store here in the UK, has gone up to pound eighty a skein, which is so expensive. Um, the place that I usually order from, which is Lakeside, um, has been trying to keep under one pound, but I think they've just gone over, unfortunately. I think just due to, you know, market value and everything's just getting more expensive. So um, I think she tried her best to keep it down, but it's it's gone up. So I think it's over a pound now. I can't remember if it was like a pound ten or something like that. Still cheaper than Hobbycraft, which is why I'll continue to shop with her when I shop, like from here in the UK. Um, but I bought a load of floss, a load of floss. So I originally, um, decided to, hang on, I've got the patterns here that I was going to, so I kitted up as in, um, I don't have fabric for them. I haven't quite decided what fabrics to use, but I've got all the floss I need. So... This was the first lot of floss, which is, you know, it's it's a fair bit in there. Um, and that was, so I've got, cause my son loves um, construction vehicles. Um, so I've got like an excavator and a dump truck and a cement mixer and all sorts of things um, in these like nice kind of watercolor-esque pattern so I decided to get to get the floss for the excavator first which is this one um, like I said I love the kind of shading on this you know if I didn't have a son who was obsessed with construction vehicles would I be stitching this probably not but we make the best <laughs> of what we have so I have that and then da, 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 da. and then I ordered for my daughter this bunny. She's obsessed with bunnies. She has several stuffed bunnies that must go everywhere with her. So I'm gonna do these. I again brought bought brought bought several patterns from um, this store, the little stitchery. Um, they're these kind of watercolor animal pattern so 
think I have like, I have a meerkat one, a giraffe, a leopard, a lion, a zebra. Yeah. And there are all these kind of watercolor things. Can you tell that I have a thing for like watercolor patterns? <laughs> um, but yes, so got that. That's in this one, I think. And I've been holding off organizing these things because I wanted to have everything together. Um, did I even finish telling you the story of how I got these? Because I, because uh, obviously, my mom. Sorry, I'm. I'm pretty sure I have ADHD, so I'm sorry if I like, you know, squirrel things. Um, but yeah, so my mom went to visit my granddad. I ordered a bunch of stuff online. She brought it to Iceland. Then my brother. A week or two ago, he came to London because he was going to go see the Harry Styles concert in London. Um, and I live about an hour outside London, so I hopped on the train, met, met up with him in London. Horrendous, horrible hot weather. The London Underground, when it's hot, is miserable. And then you have tourists that don't know how platforms work, that like... Like I, I got onto the one of the platforms and the entrance was like right on the en end of the platform and everyone was grouped down here and then I could see like literally empty platform all along it and I thought I was gonna lose my mind. I was so annoyed. I may have slightly shouted at some tourists because they just like stopped right in front of me and I was like, excuse me. Because they just like there was nowhere for me to go when they just stopped like what are you doing? Can you tell I used to live in London? <laughs> Like, I'd, I'd had to go into London, that was on Sunday, I'd had to go on Thursday as well, and that was with my two-year-old, because I had to go to the embassy, the Icelandic embassy, to renew my passport. And on that Thursday morning, I was like, oh yeah, I kind of miss living in London, you know, it'd be nice to go a bit more often. And then by Sunday, I was like, over it, like, no, I've had, no, no, I don't like it, I'm glad I don't live in London anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, so met up with him we had some lunch together and chatted which was really nice um and we both brought suitcases with us like small like hand baggage suitcases to move over because it wasn't all stitchy stuff um because my mom bought a lot of like summer clothes for my kids and then realized she's not coming until august so she should probably try and get them to me <laughs> she didn't really think that through i'm convinced she has adhd as well I mean, yeah um, but right, so we got the bunny pattern, and then let's just close that, and you're closed so I can focus on what I am doing. Um, let me just, let me just see. Sorry, this is taking a while, sorry. Um, right, so I've also bought this pattern, not this pattern, the floss for this pattern. Um, so this is Stitch Rovia or Emma Congdon um, Christmas pudding pattern. It's really stunning, really love it. Don't know when I'm gonna do it because I have so many patterns. Um, I actually, I think I mentioned this recently but I started making a spreadsheet that spreadsheet now has several tabs one of which is just a list of all the patterns I have and whether I've kitted it out whether I've got floss whether I've got fabric do I have a compatible form for either cross stitch saga which is my preferred app or markup which I don't like as much but I've kind of resigned myself to maybe using it for some of them because um I just can't be converting like the I was gonna convert the bunny pattern the one I showed you um because I asked the artist and she couldn't provide a saga compatible file which isn't that difficult I feel like but oh well um so I started trying to convert it and I've done that like I converted this one myself um into a compatible file but you have to basically go into like a pattern making app or 
um, program or whatever and put everything in yourself and then if you export it like I usually use Winstitch and you can if you export it as an .oxs file then you can upload it to Cross Stitch Saga so I did that for this one and it wasn't too bad it did take me a little bit and I started doing the bunny and I did about a 10 square and then I was like oh I can't I can't do this it's really really confetti filled um so yeah I um I, I gave up I was like fine I'll give in I'll get mark up and I'm kind of getting my head around it and it's not as bad as I felt like it was at first but um I still prefer Saga like if anyone can like point out to me how to maybe clear up some of the things like I feel like in Saga when I like I want to highlight a color it's really clear like I, I click on the button and all of the background colors it, it becomes like kind of semi opaque so the color that I'm using really stands out and is really easy to see whereas markup you just get kind of like a yellow line around whichever boxes you're trying to highlight I feel like it doesn't stand out as well so I'm a bit like yeah okay I'll, I'll make my peace with that but if anyone can tell me how to like change it so that it's more obvious which ones I'm trying to highlight that would be great that would be good because that's probably my main bugbear with that that and it doesn't do like markup doesn't do I don't think backstitch or things like French knots or stuff like that which Saga does do which I love um, I might do a little video at some point just showing how to use cross stitch saga because it's brilliant I love it so much um, it's just the main issues just that you can't upload PDF files probably because of the whole backstitch and French, French knots you you need to have that um, I, don't, I don't know the technical term of, of like whatever the program does to put in backstitching the like like wind stitch um, anyway right I'm getting sidetracked again so I got that one I think that was the last one that was in this small one then so I ordered that and then I ordered a few things um, I ordered two new Q snaps I got another that's like I think it's 8x8 eight eight. so I already had one that was 8x8 eight eight, and then got another 8x8 eight eight, and then I decided I would try an 11x11. 11 11. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like it. It might be too big. I'm not entirely sure. But we'll see. We'll try it. We'll see. Um, and I also bought... What did I buy? Um, have any of you guys heard of the Cross-Eyed Cricket? So I came across these last year in one of my groups. Cross-eyed cricket, among other things, they do they do quite a fair range of patterns, but they do these really gorgeous mitten patterns. Um, sorry that my my phone is saying it has low battery, so I'm gonna have to try and speed this up. Um, so they do these mitten patterns, they're really gorgeous. So I bought three of these little leaflets. So it has these um, over the river patterns, mitten patterns, that are these sort of like classic, like car travel themed Christmas ones. Um, and then I got the Dickens Mittens chapter one. I tried to order chapter two, but they were out at the place I, I can't remember what it was called the place but these are all from um what's it called a christmas story am i getting that i feel like that's slightly wrong a christmas something um but you know it's the classic one with the uh, you know scrooge and everything so we have got i think let me see which one this is so it is Bob Cratchit, so you can see the like money counting thing, but also the heart here to represent that he has, you know, cares about more things. 
Um, we have Marley's Ghost. And we have. Which one is that? One, two, three. Oh no, wait, I got that mixed up. Which one is that? Ah, yes, no. This is Scrooge, which makes more sense actually. This is Bob Cratchit, because he works in the money house for Scrooge. Um, then we have Ghost of Christmas Past, is this one. And then this one is Old Fezziwig. So I want to get the other one. There's another leaflet like this that has like five more Dickens patterns. So it has like, so this one is a Ghost of Christmas Past. So it has Ghost of Christmas Present and Ghost of Christmas Future. And then there were some other ones that were from A Christmas Story. Um, and then the last Cross-Eyed Cricket that I got was this one. Which I literally got just for this one little mitten here. Like, I'm not really bothered about, about these. These are very, like, in my opinion, American. Like, well, it makes sense. It's called the, the leaflet's called Plymouth Fellows, so that makes sense. You know, nothing against it. It's just not my thing. You know, I don't celebrate Thanksgiving because we don't live in the US. Um, so I literally just got this one that's kind of like a gingerbread man mitten he's very cute um so i got that then i got i bought my first linen so this is if i remember correctly 32 count i think navy blue linen what does it say on here navy hand dyed effect 32 Lugana, I think, linen. Um, and this was from dovestitch.com. Um, so yes, I thought I'd try my hand with linen. I've never stitched on linen. I'm gonna see how it goes. But this is for, this is for, where are you? This pattern. So this is these. Um, cats because I am such a cat person. Um, it is my sad, sad reality that my husband is very allergic to cats so I'm unlikely to ever get a cat. And I know what you're probably thinking is that why did I get navy because there's a lot of sort of blues and purples and will it stand out but they have this this picture in um, on Etsy. So I could see that actually, I do think it looks really good on the navy. So we're gonna try that. But that was one of the first patterns I came across at sea, like when I was starting my deep dive into the cross stitch hole. And I saw that pattern and I was like, oh, I need to do that one. So that's finally gonna happen. So I got that one. Then I decided I really needed to get some needle minders, some more, because I only had like one or two to have. Yes, I had two. Um, so you may have spotted one here in um, the little bag I showed you. It's just a little cat foot, again, cat. Um, but especially like black cat, because I think I mentioned in my last video, I had a black cat when I was younger and she was so lovely um such a lovely cat um so i felt like getting that one um then i got a legend of zelda one i had to do it i had to do it it's so cool and like i had to take advantage of the fact that my mom was in the states because it would have cost more to send this to the uk than it actually cost to buy it so i was like yep let's have that one and it's the sword and the Z. It's so pretty. I'm so happy with it. Um, and then I also got, so technically this is just a magnet, but this is Midna from Zelda Twilight Princess. Um, or, well, it's not actually Midna, it's her, it's her um, crown. It has a name. I'm blanking on it right now. 
but it has a name. I can't remember what it's called. Um, so I got that. And I may also have got some Zelda stickers. So there's Midna for those of you who don't know who Midna is. So you can see her little, little crown headpiece thing. Um, and there's Zelda. I think this is Breath of the Wild Zelda and Breath of the Wild Link. Um, most people probably are more used to seeing him. He's the very stereotypical green tunic, green hat thing. Um, kind of looks like an elf, but he dresses like this sometimes in Breath of the Wild. So that's him. Very cool. And I got this free, a bit of a, well, it says freebie sticker, may have some imperfections. And it's a little Korok from Breath of the Wild. That is Zelda as well, for those that don't, don't know. I, I, probably most of you don't know Zelda. That's very cool to me. But yes, this this one, this is just a magnet. Because I like was looking for some Zelda um, needle minders. Um, and I was messaging, because I, I couldn't really find that many. So I was messaging the guy that makes these and was asking if, you know, could he just not put the like pin bit on the pin? And then he said he had magnets and why not just do that? Because I explained what a needle minder was because he didn't know. Um, so yeah, I decided to try that. So we'll see if this works. If not, I'll just have to stick it somewhere else. No biggie. No biggie. Um, what else did I get? I got a small cone of doom. Didn't get the big one, but I got the smaller one, which I think is about 55 skeins of 310. But this will be useful, and I will tell you why this will be useful. Um, that, and so I've got floss, <laughs> lots more floss. So you can compare to the other one I was talking about. I went a bit mad because the day that my mom flew out, um, everything cross stitch, which is where I got this one, was having a sale, and they were like, I think that in in like British pounds, I think they were like forty five p, which is nowhere near like a, like I said, like all the other places are like at least a pound, if not nearly two pounds. So I went a bit wild. <laughs> Um, so I kitted out, not kitted out, got the floss for, let's be clear. I kitted out these, stop saying kitted out, why do I keep saying that? Floss, I got the floss for these, for the rings, gorgeous, lovely, love the colors, love the style, like, it's backstitch hell, and I'm gonna hate myself for it, but I think it's gonna be so worth it. Um, and then the big one where are you there you are this this is the reason why I needed the cone can you see all the black in there and I've been debating getting black Ada I'm just doing it on black Ada but I think I've been going back and forth about what what fabric to do that on I think I'm leaning towards getting easy count. I can't, I'm trying to make up my mind what like size to get, which count to get. I'm thinking maybe like 25 and maybe do it like one over one and maybe just do 10 stitch or something like that. Cause it, it's so huge. It's like 200,000 stitches, which at least for me is a lot that's a lot like even if I stitched every single day I would not be able to get that done in a year it would tr probably still take me like four years I think I've worked out that I could do like maybe 50,000 stitches a year if I'm stitching every day so that's that's like four years of like full cross stitching if I just live if I literally work just on that and I stitch every day so I'm kind of thinking maybe for that one, let's try a smaller, well, 
yeah, like 25, 28 count maybe, and just try a half, a tenth stitch. That's what I'm thinking. Um, so yeah, hit me up in the comments if you have any opinions on that, any advice, that would be really nice, because now I'm not entirely sure what to do. Like this one, this linen, I'm, I'm planning to do two over two, because it's like 32 count. Um, and I like the idea of having, like, if I need to do, because I think there are some, like, half stitches on that cat pattern, so I think it would be easier to do it on, like, a two over two in that way. Um, but, yes, so, I think... That's, oh no, I did I did buy I did buy a couple patterns. So I bought this one from Living on the Rainbow. This like mitten thing to go with the um, cross-eyed cricket ones. Which actually, the artist the for that channel, she's the one who's in some of my um, cross stitch groups, and she has done all those mittens and it's really lovely to see them like she like hangs them up all nicely at Christmas so I really want to do that but yeah so she's made some of her own um, that could go with that so I want to do that one um, and then I had a weak moment and bought another Zelda pattern because I got sent a I think it was like 60% coupon code um, another Zelda stained glass pattern, and I couldn't resist, so I was like, yeah, let's go for it. Why not? Why not? Um, I think that's it. Is there anything else I want to talk about? What have I been... Oh, floss tubes. I've been watching floss tubes. Um, I have now watched all of Crafty Gaming Jamie's stuff. That was really lovely. I love a lot of her friends and she was actually she's kind of influenced me towards the doing the tent stitch on the big um projects because she's talked about how much easier it is how much faster it is to do on such a big like full coverage project just do tent stitch like it doesn't show like you can't tell the difference so i think i'm gonna go with that um then i've been watching Jen the caffeinated crafter I think rather than stitcher she's crazy <laughs> she'd be crazy um I haven't watched all of her stuff I decided to just drop in she did a um whip parade at new year's and she has I think over a hundred whips going I thought I was bad but no she has so many whips, um, and she set at New Year's. She set um, a target for every one of her whips, and she has made herself the promise that if she does all of them, she's gonna have a new start for every day in 2024. And like, she doesn't think she's gonna manage it, but still, still, <laughs> it's hilarious. But yeah, so I've been, I've been watching her stuff as well. Um, I think I'm up to about March now of her update, so I'm, I'm getting caught up on her. Um, what else have I been watching? Um, Tally Cross Stitch. I always keep up with her as soon as she updates. Um, and then um, Stitching Moon, because she had a lovely, lovely surprise in her latest one. It's very, very cute, and I wish her all the best with her upcoming things. I won't say it. It's her place to say it, but yes, wish her all the best. Um, I think that's it. I think that's everything I have to say, and I think this is my long, longest video yet. I wasn't expecting it. I was fully expecting to have a very short video, because I thought to myself, well, I've only really worked on one project, so it's not going to be very long, but actually, it's taken quite a long time. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you'd like to do all the normal YouTube things, if you could, if you could leave comments, any advice or anything, I would love that. 
love to get a bit of interaction and thank you to everyone that has subscribed I think I'm up to like 25 subscribers which I was not expecting I thought I'd just be shouting out into the point here but I actually have some subscribers which is really really nice I really appreciate it thank you everyone who has subscribed so yeah do all the like subscribe comment I don't, I don't know what I'm doing what am I doing I'm not a youtuber what is going on um but yeah do whatever you want um and yes I will see you in a month's time and hopefully I will have a finished well Ada cross stitch stocking and then the month after that hopefully I'll have a finished stocking hopefully yay um yeah see you guys next time bye